Hey everyone, welcome back to our WordPress client portal series. Thank you so much for clicking on the video. If you haven't watched the first video in this series already where I kind of like lay the groundwork, set some expectations and give a lot of context, go ahead and watch that. That'll be linked. It'll be in the playlist here. It'll be linked above and all that. Um, and uh, make sure you check out the chapters of this video because there's gonna be a lot of different things. We're gonna be talking about a lot of different stuff. Um, so, you know, if you wanna skip around at all, if you, need, if, you, if you need to go back and check things out, or if you just want to skip ahead because you know certain things that we're going to cover, um, you know we're literally going from ground zero all the way through everything here. It's, we're not we're not skipping anything. So with that, I want to make a couple more points that I don't think I made extremely clear in the first video, and then we'll dive into it. This is going to be as pretty much as raw as it can get. These videos I'm assuming are going to be long. My normal videos are long. These are actual me doing work and doing things. We may make mistakes here and there. If they're like egregious and I have, I'm not gonna like waste your time, I will cut out some certain things. But um, I wanna be as authentic and transparent as possible because this is not a small project. There's a lot of things going on here. I also wanna be transparent that I am literally doing this to rebuild my own agency client portal because the old one is an Elementor. Um, and this is just, I've rebuilt my entire stack and that is what I'm doing in this video and I'm showing you exactly everything there. So a lot of the decisions that I make are made at like an agency minded level. Uh, and again, it's built on the things that we use. Um, I didn't make this abundantly clear either and I will make it clear in a second. The things that we will be using in this video and in this whole series, uh, you don't have to use them all. You can, but this is my current stack and I'll have videos and stuff like that linked if you want to see like in depth. I'm going to give you a quick overview here of the stuff that we're going to be working on. But um, what I would recommend is these tools are fantastic. I would not recommend them if they're not good. They are paid though. I mean like we don't, you know, I, I don't use just free tools because I, normally when you pay for stuff, the quality is much higher. So um, a lot of these things are paid. Uh, I'm not going to go over the whole price breakdown and everything like that, but you got to make your own decision if it's something that you want to actually invest in or not. Um, and like I said, if it's not something you want to do, then there were those other things, other options in the first video that maybe um, kind of suit you. But I want to make sure that I manage those expectations because I don't want you to get in, you know, you know, hours potentially of this thing and be like, oh, Mark's telling me to buy something that, uh, you know, that I don't want to buy. It's like... I have already purchased all these things. I really love them. I would highly recommend them. There will be links down in the description. Some of them may be affiliate links. If you don't want to use those, it's totally fine. Just go directly to the website. But my but my point is, it's this is not a free this is not a free project. Like you're not gonna you're not the way that I'm doing it here. Um, you could probably MacGyver some free stuff together and get it to work like this. But um, we're not using free tools. I just want to make that abundantly clear. Uh, but with that, let's talk about the actual tools and the things that we are using um, and really just like a mini overview of, of my stack per se. So um, we'll come back to this because these are things you have to worry about. Actually, we'll, we'll, we'll go hand in hand here. So for the setup, right, for the everything that we need to do with this uh, setup and where you're at right now, if you watch that first video, you're really psyched and you just want to kind of dive into it. The first thing you're gonna need is like a domain or a subdomain. We talked about that. Either you need to put it on a separate domain, like your, your company domain, and then you just have like a totally different domain name, or you need to do a subdomain. Regardless, you're gonna need a domain name. Uh, you're gonna need to register it somewhere. You're gonna have the DNS like set up and everything. This is not necessary whatsoever for this project, really, but um, Cloudflare is where we register our domains, and it's where we manage the DNS out of. So it's all in one place and it's perfect like that. Uh, I'm not gonna go super in depth there because I don't necessarily think it's worth it because you are probably not hosting on Cloud, or you probably don't have your domain registered on Cloudflare. If you do, I mean, it's a free, if you don't have a domain, it's a free account, you log in, you register a domain just like you would GoDaddy or anywhere else. Um, I am gonna assume that you have a domain or you're gonna get that. Uh, and then as far as the subdomain piece, that can be a little complex depending on where you're at, um, but that's more mostly of a, I wanna say kind of like a hosting thing, so we can kind of talk a little bit about that. Um, but you are gonna need obviously hosting as well. And I'm assuming again, if you are, you probably already have a website, so it's, and you're probably in this in this realm. So really you're gonna need to figure out if you want the subdomain and then you need hosting. Again, for us, we use Gridpane. You're probably not using Gridpane, so I don't necessarily know if I want to go deep into that. But I'm also gonna. I also have content about all this other stuff, so I will leave links and I will talk about. You know, if you want more Gridpane content and and talk about that or Cloudflare and everything like that, there is a ton of other things on the channel. Just search those, and like I said, I'll leave links. But my point is, you're gonna need domain. You're gonna need hosting. 
uh, and you're going to want to, if you do a subdomain, set up the, um, you know, an instance, an app, a website, whatever your platform calls it, you're going to want to have a fresh install of WordPress on that subdomain or that domain with an SSL. And then that's pretty much, that's pretty much it. You're just off to the races at that point, right? Uh, as far as other tools, uh, and then we'll and we'll di- and then we'll actually dive into WordPress once we get uh, through this. We're using Bricks, um, so like, like I said, the page builder of choice. You could use Elementor, you could use Oxygen, you could use whatever. Um, I love Bricks so far. I've been using it for several months now. It's great. Um, we'll be using Crocoblock, uh, Jet Engine for the dynamic data, which is like custom post types, custom fields. Um, uh, other dynamic pieces like that, some querying, uh, but mostly bricks for that. Um, so uh, we're using Crocoblock. You could use ACF, which is free. Maybe if you don't want to buy Crocoblock, maybe ACF is a is an option. It won't be exactly the same as far as the way we do things, but all of the theory and the concepts will be the same. Um, this one should have probably been with the bricks thing, but this is a framework that I use, Automatic CSS. Again, links for all these down in the description. This is a uh, just a way to speed up your page building experience in in Bricks. Um, if you don't have ACSS and you don't build a lot of websites, then you could still do pretty much everything. All this is is like simplifying and basically making a lot of like shortcut utility classes and adding variables and everything like that into Bricks so you can build faster. When I use this in this in this series. Um, I'm even not even a pro at this. So like, it's probably not even going to matter that much. I'm probably not going to be doing like a great job in certain areas. When I use this, it will probably be confusing to you because you're not going to know what like a variable and everything is. You sh- I will leave a link to this in the description. You should watch as an aside from this, if you haven't already Kevin Geary's page building 101 course, because it taught me a lot about like understanding CSS and bricks to a certain degree, but just understanding how all of that works. Um, it gives you a better idea. He doesn't even use automatic CSS, but the principles that he teaches in that, that co- it's a free, free online playlist on YouTube, um, teaches you a ton. And then, um, obviously with, uh, ACSS, you can kind of like expand upon that and just, you know, be even faster with your workflow. This one, um, is a newer one to my stack is WS form I've used it in the past. And now I recently bought into the, uh, the agency plan. You would probably don't need this. You could probably use the Bricks built-in form builder. Um, the one thing I would say is that this is going to afford you a lot of things. The reason I bought WS Form is because I know beyond a shadow of a doubt it's the most powerful form builder I've ever used and the po- most powerful form builder I've ever seen. And the reason is because with a project like this, you don't necessarily know what you're going to get into later down the line. Like This could definitely evolve and you could want to do more things. And I'm gonna give you one specific use case that I feel like I'm definitely gonna start with WS Form and just use it for all the forms on the website because of this. The first reason is like user login and registration and all that, it has that. Um, It's a separate module that you get, but it's also included in the agency program, it's called, uh, or the agency plan, it's called user management. Um, So take a look at that, but you will need that if you wanna do it for login and everything. The specific thing, and I think it's also an, I think it's actually an external add-on, but the w- the functionality that WS Form Pro has that I've never seen, I haven't seen any other uh, platform do, is within WooCommerce, if you are using WooCommerce products, you, it has a built-in module, again, I think it's an add-on, but it's, but it's, but it has it, like, native to uh, WS Form, is something where you can add forms, like a literal whole ass form on a product that somebody is purchasing. So you could potentially in the future, maybe depending on how this evolves or you know even future projects or whatever, I'm just talking about WS Form right now, is imagine a product page and then you can have like a bunch of extra fields and questions and like a whole form like kind of in there so they could fill out a bunch of different like things like that. Again, if you were doing like a, I could see if you were doing like a serve, like a, um, more of like a, uh, like a, like one of those, I, I don't know the exact model right now, but like one of those, uh, simple website things where they give you like a certain amount of information, they pay you and you just start building the website, then you could gather all of that data, like right as the, like before they even pay. Uh, so I don't know. It's just kind of an interesting, th- interesting thought. Like I said, I'm using WS form. If WS form. You don't have to, but uh, if you want to follow along exactly, that's those are the things that we're using. Those are the main things. 
Um, those are investments if you don't have them. If you don't, if you don't have them, you're still going to get a lot out of the series. I think, like I said, you can skip around. You can you can uh, go through the different modules and everything like that. And uh, if you have any questions, let me know. And if you want to see anything specific on on any of them, let me know as well. I can make separate content for all that. Okay. Anyway, with all that out of the way, those are the main tools we're using. Let's talk about getting a new uh, WordPress uh, install set up and everything like that. You go to your hosting. You, you, I'm going to assume you know how to do that part. Like I said, other other tutorials and stuff like that on the channel as well. Next thing is we're actually inside an, a fresh install of WordPress. And I'm going to give you the super high level on the way that I do this. But again, my blueprint website template, my blueprint the way I create this blueprint that I'm currently looking at right now is also on, on my channel. I will leave a link to that. But you just go to you know screen options. You get rid of all the different stuff up here. You talk about your uh, you go down to your settings. Make sure you have like a you know uh, a title in there. Make sure you all your dates and everything are all set up. Permalinks not going to matter too much. Normally just throw that on post. That's fine. Um, this site's going to be pretty locked down anyway. So as far as things like reading, like you know static homepage. Um, discussion, turn the comments off and, and things like that. Uh, but um, there's not really too much that you have to do here. It's not going to be a public site. It's going to be locked down. Most of these settings are probably are, are probably going to be good by default. Um, you know, so you should be solid there. For themes, obviously we're running uh, the Bricks Child theme specifically. So if you if you are a Bricks user, you probably already know this, but download Bricks, download the Bricks Child theme, make sure they're both on the site and the child theme is active. That's just best practice. Uh, plugins. These are all the plugins that we have currently installed on the site. Again, you do not need all of these. I'm gonna the one the only one that I didn't really talk about is well one I didn't talk about frames. I'm probably not even gonna use frames here. That's just part of my my blueprint. Happy Files Pro is purely a quality of life thing. I would highly recommend it. It's a cheap one time purchase. Um, go check it out. It's just to organize the media library and things like that until. Uh, WordPress decides that they want to make that a native feature if they ever do. Um, Jet Engine, I'll actually activate that. Nginx, Nginx Helper, that's just a, a grid pane thing. Perf Matters, um, I'm going to probably make more content on that, but that's not really going to matter for most of this series, if at all. Rank Math SEO is actually not going to matter at all. I'm going to delete that. We don't, we don't need SEO on our client portal. Redis Object Caching is to, again, just kind of cache like the um i feel like it, i don't even honestly 100 percent know like the the objects like the the posts and stuff like that your database i guess um so but we're not we're gonna leave that off for now because that's not important short pixel image opt optimizer Th lot surrounding that heavy topic it's not really going to work probably on an nginx server right now because i haven't configured anything and honestly they're not going to be a ton of like images and stuff like that that i'm worried about right now so we're just that's not important Talked about WS Forum Pro and then the user management add-on uh, to log in and everything like that. So uh, those are that's our our list there as far as the plugins and everything like that. Now let's talk about kind of where should you start? Where would you start if 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 I were you? Where would we start? Well, the first thing that I would say is these are uh, um, little things that I already have in here for uh, you know just dummy data when I create my thing. Uh, but what I would first thing I would do is I would say you should probably you're probably going to want like a dashboard page, and when I mean dashboard page, that is like the first thing that somebody logs into when they when they get a dashboard. So or, or I'm sorry, when they log into their thing, that's the first thing they're going to see. So we're just going to call it dashboard. All right. So dashboard update, and I'm going to do 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 do. Okay. So this is another. This is actually a good a good place to start because. The other thing you're going to have to decide is what do you want your home URL to go to? In my mind, you want it to go to, well, actually, it not, it's not just that. When somebody goes to um, portal.findatech.dev and replace it, I'm going to be saying that a lot, but replace that with whatever your subdomain is or your domain is. That is like when somebody goes to portal.findatech.dev, that is what they're going to, that's what they see. Right, and um, that's where the, when you tell your client to go to it, that's what they're going to. Now, in my mind, you want that to. It has to have the the login on it. It could. 
There's a couple of different ways to think about this. To be honest, I think the best thing to actually do to kind of show you this would be just to do a quick little example. So if we pop back over into our tool Whimsical, which I don't think I've actually told you what this is yet. It's just a like a mind map and site map thing. It's pretty cool. I think they have a free plan. Go check it out, whimsical.com. I'll throw a link in the description. Um, but uh, here's what I mean, okay? If we say that this is our... Um, domain or our subdomain, whatever. This is our where our website is. In this case, it's portal.findatech.dev. In your case, it would be something different. What I think we need to figure out is we need to figure out just like kind of a basic, uh, kind of a site map in a way um, for, for our page names, if you will, and also our like what the links are going to be and kind of what to expect just so we have like an idea of what the hell we're building here and how we're going to build it. So in the past, and what I'm going to do into the future here is uh, this is the example is like, this is kind of like the home slash login, but really it's the login. There's no reason for a home page if, if you have it set up like this. If they click to go to, if they're on your main marketing website and they click to go to um, your login or whatever, then there's there's nothing on a home page. We're not indexing anything. There's no reason for any of that. What we're gonna do is we're, in this case, and again, you could set your URL structure up differently, but this in this example, we're gonna go portal.findatech.dev what you expect to see on that page is just a login box. That's it. That's what's in the URL bar. That's what's on the that's what's in the uh, in the box there, or on the page rather. There's not going to be a page that's like slash login. That's not how we're going to set this up. Our home page, if you will, is literally going to be a login page. That's that. Then if we go to, uh, for instance, our password reset, when we set that up, that'll most likely be a different page. Uh, it doesn't have to be, but for the time being, we're just going to say that it's going to be like, I don't know, password reset or something like that. Um, and then for our create account, same type of thing, but we're going to say probably just like register um, or you can create account or whatever. And But this is the main part here is when somebody goes in just so we understand our flow, they're going to come and they're going to search for the uh, you know, whatever, the portal.findatech.dev, they're going to click that link. They're going to get directed to a, a page that has that. It's just going to say log in, they can log in. Once they log in, the redirect is going to go to slash dashboard or whatever else you want to put there, but slash dashboard. So what that means when we get to the redirections is that if they are logged in and they go to if like, let's say they go to your marketing website and they're already logged in, but they've went there and then they click login, it's gonna to try to take them to portal.findatech.dev. If they are already logged in though, like if if we have it set up where you know it doesn't log them out automatically or at least keeps them logged in for a long time and they haven't logged out manually, it's going to automatically redirect them from that root, like domain, subdomain thing, and it's gonna send them over to dashboard. And we're going to be able to do all that and it's all going to work and everything like that. But my point is like you have to understand and operate off of some fundamental, you know, kind of uh, plan here before we start doing that. So with this in mind, let's go back and let's start creating pages. All right, cool. So what that means is that our home slug in a way or whatever is just going to be, we're just going to call this login. Okay. Now, if we, as an example, go into... Um, here and this is dashboard. Okay, so if we slide this over here, now we can see we got a login page and we have over here we have portal.findatech.dev and there's no there's no slug associated with that. This is our home page. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna throw the login on there. Cool. All right. So if we go back, we can create just a couple other pages just to have an idea of what we want here. We'll say um, create account and um, for now I think we'll say. I kind of like create account, but I also kind of like register. It's not really that important. So we'll do register, publish, cool. And then we'll go back here. Um, and do we want to create another page? We will create a dashboard, I guess. Yeah, okay. Dashboard, cool, publish, publish. All right, and this one should have been our actual dashboard. Can I see it? Yeah, perfect, okay. So we have three pages now. We have our home page, which is really our login. We have our create account page, which is slash register. And we have our dashboard, which is slash dashboard. So that gives us kind of like an idea of what's going on there. Now, if we click on dashboard, for instance, and we go out there, we're just gonna see dashboard. If we click back to, uh, if we just go to actually here, for instance, we're gonna see uh, portal.dev. And then just so you know that, because I think it did some weird stuff in the URL bar there for a second, because we had that loaded. Cool. All right, so login. So maybe we start on the login. Why does that make that make sense, right? All right, so 
if we go to edit with bricks, we're editing the login page with bricks. And um, I'm just gonna show you how I would kind of build this, right? So section, so we want a section. And again, I, I'm gonna actually preface this right now. I do my best to, con to conform to best practices with bricks and ACSS and everything like that. Uh, I am not perfect, so you know some of this stuff is not going to be is not going to be fantastically perfect. And I'm also operating without an actual design in mind right now, so there's a, there's there's going to be some tweaking and things that we do along the way. Um, but what I would recommend for you is to have like a better idea of exactly what you want to kind of create. And uh, I think in certain parts of this, we're definitely going to do that more because it's going to have it's going to have to be done. But just to kind of get like a little bit of a framework here for how this this login situation is going to go. That's what we're going to we're just going to kind of fly by the seat of our pants here right now. So with the login screen, I mean, it doesn't need to be anything special. It's literally just going to be basically one section, I would normally say it's just going to be, you know, the, the height of the screen. And then we're going to have um, some info in here. So let's drop a WS form in here and we'll always put it in the wrong spot there. We'll just drop it in there. Cool. We have to go make the form. Um, I guess we can call the section login perhaps. Um, yeah, there we go. And then, uh, like I said, we have to go make the form. We should probably put a heading in here perhaps and maybe our logo. And why does it always put it inside and outside there? We'll say login. For now, if I could type, there we go. All right, and then what I kind of want to do is I want to experiment around with this. If we go to style, um, should probably bemify as uh, as Kevin Gary would say all this real quick. But let's do um, login. Is there anything else that we want to put in here? I would say probably a logo. So let's just do an image. And eh, really, probably should be an SVG. Uh, that would be best practice. So SVG heading and then the form. Anything else that we really need in there? Uh, I don't think so. So we'll just do it like that. And I think maybe we can call this maybe an inner. Uh, and then we'll bend this. So we got this login inner. Da, 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 da. Cool. Uh, I'm actually going to change this login uh, form. Heading, um, that's probably fine. We'll change this to logo. And yeah, I think that's cool, right? Cool, all right, let's BIM it. So this is an ACSS feature. Um, all this is doing is uh, I've tried to very much adopt a class first approach because uh, I was in Elementor land and now I'm, now I'm here. So um, what this does is just afford you like so much so much flexibility, so much maintainability and scalability by just putting classes literally on all the freaking, you know, uh, elements and, and containers and everything like that over in the, in the uh, navigation. So you just apply these classes and then you can see over here that it automatically made these these classes here. So I did that. You really ideally, I think the idea is you want to put the structure in place and then you want to BEM it, which is block element modifier. Like it's a just a methodology of like naming classes. But you want to have the structure in place so then you can do that. So then you can go, as you saw, I caught myself. I clicked on the heading and then I was like, oh, I want to, I want to style it or whatever. Well, actually I clicked on, um, in this case, I'll probably click on the section, maybe the container as well. And then you, and then you're, and I was going to be like, oh, I want to, I want to make this like, um, I want to kind of like, for instance, center these things. And if I would have done certain, obviously this isn't the style thing but like certain ones like it's sometimes confusing because some of these things are like I feel like some of these things are class based and but they're in the, the content rather than style I don't know it's confusing but um the uh what I was going to say there is if you if you put that if you style it on the ID level you can put a class on it and then copy the styles but it's a pain in the ass so you're better off like pick, like getting the structure setting the structure up putting the classes on them and then styling is kind of the, the best way to kind of go about it. Also, what I was going to do is I was going to go like this. I was going to go to um, our section now, and I was going to go to style and layout and height and say 100 view height. And then that, so that made our section the whole, the whole height there. And then if we go back here and we say center on this, now our, our content is, our whole section is the whole, you know, height of the screen, the view, the view height. And then 
the content is right in the middle. So it just looks, it's always just kind of like center center basically is kind of the, the idea. And then if we go over here and obviously we don't have any other information there. So I need to upload a logo and I need to upload the, uh, and we need to build the form. All right, so we got that uploaded. Let's insert that. It's huge, awesome, great. What's going on here? Okay. And then we'll just say, uh, we could do a bunch of different things here. I'm not sure if I have var uh, icon size, just for the heck of it. Let's just do, um, let's just try like 2M. That's way too small. Five, that looks fine to me. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's fine. It is what it is for now, cool, great, boom. We have a little logo, that's awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, uh, most importantly, much more importantly, let's go to the uh, form here. And I already have like kind of a new form set up. We will, uh, we'll just start from scratch though. All right, so I'm kind of confused, honestly. I guess we have user management. So this is WS form with the user management add-on and um, Wow, it's actually, I didn't even realize that. You have Jet jet Engine. Hmm, that's kind of cool. I don't even know what that is. A little Jet Engine icon in there. I'm not 100% sure what that is. Seriously, I have no idea. Uh, but let's try this login template just so we can kind of, honestly, like something like this, I, I don't know why we wouldn't use a why we wouldn't use a template for something like this and then tweak it to our, to our liking. It's gonna save us time and energy and, and work. But I'll explain kind of what's going on here. Um, so username or password, personally, I, this is me, you know, this is a me thing. Uh, I hate the username situation uh, because WordPress says you can't change your username. I don't know if that's 100% true because I have changed a username before. You can't really do it by default. I don't know. I would never, ever, I wouldn't confuse my users personally. I would rather just say email address. Um, whether or not... Uh, that has to be an email, you know, like whether or not it actually has to be an email. I just, I would just say like, just put your email in there. Don't, don't like, they're going to be like, oh, do I have a username? It's like, I don't just, just put the email in there. Okay. So, um, I want to save. And then, uh, this is a hard workflow thing. If you're new to WS form, you have to click this publish button. Just sometimes I, I definitely always forget about that. And then I think I'm going to need to refresh the builder over here. And if I go down here, I want to select my form. We're going to say login. So now we have something here. Awesome, cool. I'm gonna show you a lot of cool things along the way too. I'll show you one right now, um, if I can remember how to do it here. So login, login form is like our is our thing, but there is a, a because uh, Kevin Geary loves WS form, ACSS has a built-in, um, has a built-in setting or like a built-in, like, you know, built-in class structure and everything like that, like utility for form light and form dark so you can and I, I don't think i actually i don't know if i 100 percent did it on on this website yet but like if if you styled your buttons and you styled different things you put this form light on here and then it automatically um styles everything up just how you want it so i think i'm going to put that on there just for now and um if we re reload on the front end we can kind of see also ws form has this crazy cool uh debugger thing down here that is totally unnecessary most of the time, but it's amazing when you need it. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna get rid of that. There's a way to globally get rid of that. I need to look into that right now, but but yeah, so we're, we're moving along with that. Email and password already, and remember me. I don't, I don't know if I like the remember me option because I think most of the time people just kind of do it themselves, but, but there you go. So we have email address, password, remember me. Didn't even really need to do much, done in five seconds. I love the, uh, the efficiency of that. You could definitely, I mean, this is amazing. I actually might turn some of these things on. I'm going to turn this password visibility toggle on. I remember tried to do this in the last ones and um, it's a real, it's a real, oh wow, you can suggest a password? What? That's amazing. I'm learning things. Holy cow. Okay. Let's go back here and take a look at all that stuff. Wow. This is a crazy. Wow. You can like, well, obviously that's from Google, but look at that. That's amazing. You can like just suggest one. That that seems a little confusing. I wish that was a little better UI, but um, I love the show and show and don't show. Okay, so these are the types of things though that I think that you 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 really would miss if you were using a different form builder. So I'm very happy. Like I tried to do this this thing with Jet Engine and it was a pain. 
this is like unreal that that's that that's built in so i don't know sorry i'm geeking out on a couple of these things but um, i'm going to turn off suggest password because it's cool but i don't want to necessarily use it i really love the password strength meter as well um, so i'm going to keep that on uh, but yeah that's dope well actually the one thing i would say is password password strength meter may, means no it, don't turn it on on the on the login that doesn't make any sense cuz that's that's totally that totally doesn't make any sense but on that when we get to the create account form i definitely i definitely will do that um, but uh, the visibility thing that that makes sense so we'll keep that on i really need to get rid of this cuz I, I this i feel like this is a i feel like that's a uh, a bug there to a certain extent cool okay so we got our login thing i'm not sure about the remember me yet but you know, we'll, we'll deal with that when the time comes. Okay, let's focus on, um, let's focus on, I'm going to need to open it in, 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 in an incognito tab, but let's see if we can get it to log in and move over to uh, the, um, what's it called here? So like if we go down to, we have our login button, everything like that. Let's take a look at the actions. So user management, show message, redirect. Okay, user management. It's gonna probably do a lot of this stuff for us. It's got everything mapped already, which is nice. And let's see, do, 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 form is okay, cool. All right, so everything is mapped there. We wanna redirect though. When we redirect, we wanna redirect somewhere. We wanna redirect to, well, I guess we could redirect just straight to a page, huh? Let's just do it like that. Redirect to a page, cool, done, awesome. Save, close, publish, don't forget to publish. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do here is I am going to, um, I'm gonna open an incognito window. I'm gonna go to portal, oops. I'm gonna go to, nope, that's not what we wanted. I'm gonna go to portal dot, uh, let's see, what do we want? Let's just copy the damn thing because I don't feel like typing. Boop, 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 there we go. All right, portal, boom. All right, so when we go here, and we log in, which I'm gonna make a, uh, I'm probably the next thing I'm gonna do is make a, like a fake user account or something, uh, is we need to be able to log in here and it redirect straight over to the dashboard. All right, so let's create a test user here real quick. I'm just gonna say the username is client. I'm gonna put a uh, email in here and I'm gonna just call him John Doe. And then I'm gonna go like this and uh, we don't really need to send the user a new thing. We're gonna keep him as a subscriber from now. We don't, probably gonna stay as a subscriber actually, um, unless they, when we do WooCommerce, it's gonna add some customer and, and different other like roles. So that, that'll that kind of change it. But for now, subscriber's fine. We don't need to do anything crazy with like extra roles or whatever. So I'm just gonna add this new user. I'm gonna keep that uh, there. And then I'm gonna go like this and we're gonna come back over here and I'm gonna say, Hello at finditech.com and I'm going to paste in this password and we're gonna see what happens. You're successfully logged in and you go to the dashboard. Hey, look at that, that works, that's amazing, awesome. Okay, just out of curiosity, what happens when we go back like this? Okay, see, now this, there's a couple things here obviously that to already note. The first thing is we have the top bar which we need to deal with because we don't want our we don't want subscribers to see the top bar. We'll deal with that. Um, but the other thing is like this right here is one of those like quality of life issues where you can deal with this one of two ways. In one way, I feel like you could be a little lazy and you could say, all right, just hide this form if the user is logged in and just say you're already logged in. You could do that. Um, in my opinion, I would like more, uh, I think a, 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 a more polished approach would be that if you are logged in, you cannot get to this page. We're gonna make it so if you get to this, if you are logged in and you come to portal.findetect.dev, then you are gonna be redirected back to the dashboard. Because the idea is, here's the idea, I wanna break this down for you for a second because this often gets overlooked and it's really like annoying. When, when, when somebody comes to your website for the very first time, I know this is already, I know we're already logged in. This is just because I've, I've clicked back. When somebody comes to your website for the very first time, they are going to they are going to be on this login screen. And if they're smart, well, regardless of if they're smart or not, they're, they're, at some point they're gonna click the bookmark button. Honestly, they're probably gonna click the bookmark button inside the dashboard, 
But regardless, like you want to make sure that all of the, the redirection is signed up. For me, what I do is wherever I log in, that's where I normally click the bookmark button because I want to be able to go right back to like where I'm where I need to log in at or where I need to sign in at or whatever. But if you if the redirection is set up properly, if if somebody clicked the bookmark bar or the bookmark button at the login page and you made it so like there is just a it just hides the form like this page is accessible when logged in and they and you just hide the form here then it's going to be kind of annoying that they have they're going to literally come to this they're going to see a message that says you're logged in or something and then they're going to have to go and and navigate to the dashboard or something like that so all i'm saying is that if the pages should not be accessible to logged in people just like we don't make you know uh, the restricted pages logged into log visible to log out people. We do the same thing here. So we will deal with that. And that's, uh, that's something that I think is very important, something we should do. All right. So the next thing that I want to do though, is I want to get rid of the, the, uh, bar here up top for people that are not like actually admins or anything other than subscribers. So let's take care of that. So I think to hide that top bar, I think there's a cheat way to do that. And uh, I'm gonna skip ahead here. We're not actually gonna do this stuff, but I'm going to install WooCommerce right now. It's gonna ask me to set up my store and I'm not gonna do that. Um, and I think this adds, um, I think this adds those roles. And I wanna say like by default, it ends up doing the thing that we want it to do. So let's go back to users for a second and let's go to clients. And now we have, you can see we have subscriber, we have customer. I'm gonna make it a customer actually, because from now on, and uh, we, can, we, can, we can definitely set this, but from now on, I think what we want is we want anybody that signs up to be a customer, because it'll make sense more down the line depending on how you do this. The way that I would recommend probably doing it, just based on the default, and again, you, you could get more convoluted if you need to, but it's probably not gonna be necessary. What you want is if you go to the general settings, the new default user role is going to be customer. And then anybody that logs in, anybody that creates account is a customer. And then once they create uh, an account, like once you create an account of, I'll use, let me use an example like a Netflix. You can have a Netflix account without actually being subscribed to Netflix, meaning that like you, you have a Netflix account and password and they'll send you emails and all that, whatever. But unless you're paying them $20 a month or whatever it is, you're not subscribed. So the way to kind of differentiate that kind of in the back end, at least one way, is that if you can be a customer, if you are, you're a customer if you just have the account. But when you're subscribed, you're a subscriber. So then like that's a way to, for us, we wanna make sure that we know in, in the back end of the website, like if somebody comes in and they've subscribed us for, you know, two years and then they stop, they're still gonna have data in the in the site and they could still like potentially utilize the portal or pieces of it or whatever, depending on how you set it up, but they're not actually a, an active subscriber. So um, that's just kind of the way that I would, that I would, uh, that's one way that I would process that. All right, so now we have, um, we have that uh, user as an actual subscriber. And let me see if that actually did anything here. There we go, nice, awesome. So now it's gone. It's gone by default. If you don't use uh, WooCommerce, there's probably definitely a simple little code snippet that you could uh, that you could utilize for that. Um, and this is obviously giving us some confusion now in a way because of uh, look at our little thing there. That's so cool. Um, this is very hard. The first, the next thing we need to do is we need to make sure that we know we need to figure out when when we're logged in and when we're not because this is the most annoying thing in the world to like not know. But as you can see, we are definitely being logged in, probably log, almost logged in twice there in a way. And there is no thing at the top anymore. So all we did was uh, uh, something that we would have had to do anyway, which was uh, start up uh, WooCommerce and kind of go from there. So if we go back here and we take a look at uh, what we're gonna do next here, what we could do next and probably what we should do next is make another form. So let's get rid of this one because I like to keep everything clean. So we have login, that's awesome. Let's go to add new over to user management and we have reset password, we have forgot password. Interesting, okay, so that's, well, I actually kind of didn't really think about that. There's two, there's technically two things there, right? There's forgot password where you have to put in your, your, your 
email to get that and then there's forgot and then there's reset password so maybe let's do forgot password and um let's take a see let's take a look here so please enter your username and okay yeah so i'm wondering this is this is actually another really nice thing that you're that we're building all these forms in here because if you don't build it like this and you use something that's predefined it's very hard to like change something like this so I don't want it to say username. Don't 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 do that. Please enter your, your email address. You will receive a link to create a new password via email. Cool, like that. The username or email address. We're going to change that. Obviously, it could be, but we don't need to tell them that. We don't need to make things more complicated than they need to be for people that don't you know aren't going to know how to use this anyway. Right off the rip. All right, cool. Forgot password. Publish. Awesome. Okay, so that should be pretty close to what we need there. Get a new password, which is interesting actually. Get a new password. I don't know about the language there, but we'll, we'll play around with that. Okay, cool. So now what we need to do is we're gonna, you can do this different ways. You could absolutely do this different ways. Um, I remember Jet Form Builder has like kind of like neat little ways that you can do it. In my opinion, and also um, we need, I see we need to do one other thing here as well. We need to go to log the login one back here. And we need, we need to find a forgot password. Um, we need to create a forgot password link. Now it's probably not gonna be in here. We could probably do it. I'm wondering the best way. I don't know if they have a, a default way to do it. I'm assuming they probably don't. But that would be nice if we could put a little forgot password thing in the form. What I'm talking about, and I'm not probably describing very well, is right here. Wow, that thing's annoying. Um, uh, right here is like you would you would expect normally. I feel like to see forgot password, maybe like right under here somewhere, right? Maybe, honestly, right here in Remember Me. I might actually just take out the Remember Me checkbox, and uh, and and put it there because I don't necessarily need that. Although it is it is very cool they have that there, but that's not that's not necessary. So actually, a very good way to do this is if we're on our login thing here um, for password. Uh, this HTML not necessary. You don't. You definitely don't need to do that. I don't think that's probably the 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 best way to pop that in there. We had our email. We had our password. We got rid of our remember me. Um, to, not necessary in this case. You can keep it if you want it. But for password, if you click on password, you click on the settings here, and you come down to help text. Um, it has built in, you know, field for that. And then if you put in a link, this will actually work. You can put in the link to your forgot password page. And let me show you a really cool feature. If you click on this preview button here on uh, WS form, it'll actually show you, it'll pop up in a new window, uh, the, the preview of the form. So you can go back, you, you, it live previews every time you save it. So you don't have to like go to the new page and press refresh and everything like that. Um, and this is the help text. The help text gets displayed right underneath. So a lot of times what I've seen is I've seen like forgot my email, forgot email or forgot password or whatever. So if you click forgot your password now, it's not actually going to, I don't think it's actually going to, um, let me refresh over here. Uh, actually, I didn't, I don't think I published it. That's another, always got to press the publish button. I always forget to press that. Um, if you come down here and you press, like I said, forgot password, obviously, um, it's going to go to where we needed to go. In our case... I believe I put in forgot password as the URL, so it's not going to work. I think what we should probably end up doing, and I'm not 100% sure, I'm going to get rid of these screen options right now, but um, I'm not 100% sure we're going to have to kind of see this. Oh, also WooCommerce creates like a bunch of other things. Thanks for that, WooCommerce. Appreciate that. Uh, the um, right here, where are we going? Uh, the forgot password. Did we have that? Maybe we didn't have that. I don't think we created that actually, but somewhere we should create a forgot password page um, unless we want to do it the other way where we could do, you click the button and then the, the form kind of changes, which I don't, I don't think it's, it's probably not necessary. Um, so let's do a forgot password page. We'll say forgot password and then we'll press publish, publish, and then we'll go over to edit this with bricks. And what I'm going to do here is, uh, honestly, mm, honestly, there's a there's a couple different ways to go about this. Um, I'm thinking with without without dynamic components. I was going to say we could probably be like really uh, sophisticated about this 
and we could make all of our login, the pages that that are external that just have uh, forms on them basically, and like maybe some other some other styling and design, like but but they're all like very similar and templated. We could make them all a kind of like a, a, a template and then just swap out the information on the inside, which we actually we actually still can and we probably still should. So I'm just trying to run this through my head. Again, with dynamic template or dynamic components, that's gonna be a, a total game changer. But I will backtrack because I think this is a good um, I think this is a good learning lesson, and especially if you're not familiar with bricks. There's, um, there's something to be said there. So these are some defaults that I had, header, footer, 404. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to Bricks, I went to Bricks, Templates, and I'm gonna add a new template. And I'm gonna say, we'll call them, um, we'll call them uh, external, uh, we'll, we'll call them public pages. Public pages, I guess. We could always change that, but that's fine. And then we will call it a single, and we will say publish. So we're creating a template for our public pages. And then we're gonna to go to edit with bricks. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna make a section. I'm actually, here's what I'll do. I'll make this really easy. What I'll do is I'll go over to our client portal page. And the reason I'm doing this is so I don't need to do those extra steps every single time. So this is a little bit, I'm, I'm kind of going backwards, but, I'm, I'm, but, I, but I think, in the, in, I know that in the future this is gonna be easier now uh, with these couple pages out here if I ever wanted to change anything. I'm just trying to be a little more scalable, maintainable, and all that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this. I'm going to come over to public pages. I'm going to paste it. And I, where can I paste this? Let me paste paste it here and play with it. Uh, yeah, we'll allow that. Okay, cool. Um, all right. So this is a section. I'm going to delete this section. I'm going to go here. I'm going to go log in. So now what this did is it you, it's obviously um, created that same that same kind of like section there. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to call this. Uh, on this template, I'm gonna call it like full section or something like that. I don't know, like full page section, I guess. And and then we'll call it inner, and we're probably gonna end up getting rid of uh, the styling and stuff, or at least changing. We're gonna be changing the, the names of those those uh, those stylings there. So the idea is then. What here's the here's the thought process. If our login page, our create account page, our password reset page, and any other like thing like that, any of those other pages are gonna look exactly the same except for like the forms, then really the probably the maybe the one of the best ways to do it is like a dynamic um, component, but we don't really have that yet. So one way you could do it is to save yourself time and energy that if you ever changed like you know one thing all of the stuff changed is um, create a uh, create more of a um, uh, a template for it at the page level and then we can just you know edit things kind of in one place and not have to worry about changing them six different places so if this is not making sense to you let me explain let it, let me explain what I mean we are in the template right now the public pages template what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna I'm gonna say full page section then there's an inner then there's a logo I want do I want the logo to be on every single uh, do I want the logo to be on every single page like when, when it's a public page like password reset and everything I would say yeah that's a nice touch I feel like do I want the heading to be on it yes but with one exception we're gonna change it we're gonna say post title so now, whether we're on the login page or the create account page or whatever, it's going to be the post title. Cool. The login form. Do I want that to be on every single page? Yes, uh, but we kind of want it to be different depending on how it is. So, and actually, this is kind of interesting because WS form might make it even kind of like cooler for us. We might even be able to save a step here uh, depending on how this works. Enter the form ID to render. Can we do a, hmm, hmm. I actually have a really interesting idea that I just got right now. What we could do maybe is we could create a custom field for those pages. We could put the form ID within those pages and then, ooh, this is interesting. We might be getting into some something kind of cool really quickly just because I, I like to be as extra as possible at all times. Okay, so here's here's my thought process, and I think we're gonna we're gonna we might be experimenting together here. Okay, so 
here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna say we're just gonna say form here. Actually, again, we're kind of going we're kind of going around the around the world here. But I'm telling you that if you do this this way, you're gonna be actually much much happier. And honestly, you could just keep doing it the other way. But um, let me pause. You can either do what I'm about to do, and I know we might backtrack a little bit if you've been following along. But I'm telling you, this is going to be a better way long term. I just didn't think of it in this way at first. You could absolutely do what we just did. You could duplicate those things. How often your page is going to change? Probably not that much. But if I would have known, especially with the WS form, that you could do that, then I probably would have done this way from the start. So here's what we're going to do. This is our template for our public pages. The uh, logo is going to stay the same all the time. And honestly, we could even make that a little bit more uh, maintainable and scalable if we wanted to. We could make like an option for that logo, which actually might as well do it as well. I'm giving you a whole lesson here. We're getting deeper than it is, but ultimately we're staying on the registration um, and public pages. So let's, let's go all in. If we're going to go in, let's go all in. Okay. So where can we start? Let's dip our toes into the water here with some options pages. All right, so the first thing we wanna do is we wanna go to options page and we're gonna say, um, we're just gonna say like, uh, let's say um, general, general details. If you don't know what an options page is, an options page is basically options that you can change fields that you can manage and then change and then use wherever kind of like on a one-off basis. The most E, the easiest way to think about an options page is to just think of like business details, like things that you're going to use over and over again on the site, like information wise, that you would like to just be able to reference and not have to put in every single time. Like your logo. Let's say your logo is used 10 places on your website. You do not want to statically put that in there 10 times because if your logo ever changes, you're going to change it every single place that it's at. You want it to be in like one single source of truth to quote Kevin Gary, but one single place where you can just, if your logo ever changes, you can change it one place and it changes it and it's referenced everywhere and you can change it like that. So um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say logo and this is jet engine by the way. So I know ACF pro has options pages, but you got to pay for that too. So I don't know if, it, I don't know if you're getting options anywhere for free uh, and we're going to say media and that's what we're going to do there. So, okay, cool. We'll add this page. So now what we have is general details, which I don't really like where that's at. I'm going to say, uh, that instead, uh, there we go. I like that. All right. So general details logo, and we're going to put our logo in there. Cool. All right. So save. So now we have our logo. Probably should have done that from the beginning. Apologize. There's our logo, right? Cool. All right. So our logo is now is now uh, an option. And the other thing that, wanna, that I wanna do is, I'm honestly experimenting here, but I'm already getting a little excited because I think this is kinda, kinda cool. Well, here's my thought process. My thought process is if I can relate, I can do this one of two ways. The, the first way would be okay, the second way would be optimal. The first way is we have forms, right? So if we go to our forms, we have, we're gonna have a login form, we're gonna have a password, we're gonna have a forgot password form, we might have a reset password form too, I think. We're gonna have a create account form. Those are all forms in WS form. If option one is to create a custom field attached to pages that says, what is there a form on this page? What form is on this page? And then associate that form with that page. That's option one. Another option, and, and it would be like something like adding the form, um, adding the form ID or something like that. Uh, which in this case, what what are these form IDs? Is it, where do you find the form ID on this thing? No idea. We're gonna have to figure that out. Oh, we're right up, up here, I guess. So two, WS form ID two. Okay. So um, th there's gonna be a form ID for each form and you wanna associate that with a form. So we can go back to here and we can say, instead of instead of selecting our form statically, we can pick a form ID and we could put it in like that. Sorry, that was the uh, the thing there. So I wonder if it, is it just two? Oh wow, it is just two. Okay, cool. Okay, so the idea here is can we select our form and, and, and can we relate our form to our pages? If we can relate forms to pages, then we could just say, okay, on the login page, we always have this login form and it's that simple, right? All right. 
So my first thought is, and I'll, I'll like again, I apologize that uh, you, you're probably be learning a few things here with this, uh, with the way that we're doing this here. So hopefully it won't be too daunting here. Um, my license is not expired. I just didn't redo it. Um, okay. Do, 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 do. Let's go into post types. Right, I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Rather, maybe we should just show rather than than uh, than just talk. All right. So let's actually no, no, don't want to go there. I want to go here. I want to go to built in. I want to go to pages, and this is where you can add meta fields to posts or to you know pages or built in built in posts. So the idea here would be like form, okay, and then. You could, we could, this is, this is option number one, okay, is we say, we say, well, I'll say like associated form, okay, and then, and then it's a number field, okay, cool, update post type, cool, and then we go to pages, now we go to pages, now we go to login, and then on login here now, there is going to be a, a thing down at the bottom that's going to have associated form, we could say two, we say update, we come back over to our pages, and then we can say, instead of literally putting two in there, because that's not what we would want to do, we could, I might have to, uh, I might actually have to refresh. And then instead of doing that, we could go form and we could scroll down and we could say associated form. And then we say that. And now our, now it's not linked up, but if this is linked up to, I'll give you an example actually. Let's do template settings, conditions. So what this is a template. Every public page is gonna look exactly like this. It's gonna automatically pull in the heading, the heading here, and it's gonna pull in the appropriate form because we have created that custom field on the pages that we're setting the form ID into, which we may end up changing because I don't think it's optimal. Also, while we're here, what I'll do here is I'll show you that option thing. What I was doing there was I was putting that logo directly in there. I was hard coding, quote unquote, putting that directly in there. We don't really want to do that. Um, although it seems like with an SVG, you can't do dynamic data. So that kind of sucks. So I'll have to figure that out. That's annoying. Yeah. Why can't you have a dynamic SVG? That seems extremely silly. Anyway, we'll figure that out. It'll be an image or something like that. It'll be fine. But the idea would be that you would have Here's an, here's, here's an idea for you. If, if, if you don't have an SVG, you're probably gonna be using image anyway. So if you go image and you say dynamic data, and then you go to, you just type in logo, and then now that logo is being referenced rather than being just like dumped in there. But for the, for the concept of where we're at, it's, it's fine for now. So um, there we go. All right, so what I wanna do here is I wanna press save. I wanna go over here. I wanna say template settings. I wanna say conditions. I wanna add condition. I'm adding this condition, this, this public pages thing, I want it to be, we could put it, we could do it a couple of different ways, but, but for the time being, we will just do it like, we'll just do it like this. We'll say individual and we'll say login page and we'll say, um, we will say, uh, we could say front page truthfully, but the login page is our, is our front page. And then we'll say individual and we'll say create account page. Now there's only gonna be a few of these. If there was a ton of these, you wouldn't want to do these individually. And there's probably a way we could do it where it's not individually like this, but login, create account, and then uh, forgot password for now. And what that's going to do for us is that now we don't have to really, for, honestly, we don't have to create this at all anymore. This, this, like the actual page for forgot password. Because if we go to easiest way to get there would be let's refresh this. So as you can see, it's pretty much the exact same. If we go, we didn't have a forgot password page. Okay, let's just we we had it. We had the page made, but we didn't actually create anything on the page. Let's remember that, right? And now we go to view forgot password, and now we have this. We didn't we didn't sync up the the form properly yet, but we have that. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like we didn't actually build that. That is being generated dynamically, and that's like the beauty of I don't know, WordPress, custom post types, all that jazz. So let's go to forms and I will do one more step and we'll be where we need to be. I would I would like to make it one step better, but um, actually you can see it right here, form ID three. So if we go back to forgot password and we press edit page, then we go down to the custom field that we made and we put three down here. This is gonna pull that, that forgot password form with the third, uh, with the number three ID to it. And then if we go back, booyah. 
I mean, it doesn't get it doesn't get cleaner than that. It doesn't get easier than that. I wish I would have done that from the start. I apologize about that. But that is the way you should definitely do these pages if they're all going to be the exact same because it's just going to be way easier that way for you and way more maintainable. So let's take a step back real quick and take a look at where we're at. Obviously, there's a ton of extra pages in here that we don't need necessarily right now, but let's try to overlook those. Let's look at the main ones. So we have our login, which is actually our home page. We have our forgot password. We have our create account that we still need to do. Um, and the as far as forms go, we have our login. We have our forgot password. The I know I said what I said in the beginning. The way we're actually creating these pages is we've created the pages and we've set a dynamic like a, we've set a bricks template to populate those pages for us because they're all so similar. And we actually have nothing. If you clicked in to edit with bricks on forgot password or on login, I'll actually just show you real quick. There is nothing on each of these now. There's nothing. I, I deleted the one but, that we had before because, but, but let me show you though. If you go to the page, you saw there was nothing there, but there still is something here on both pages because it is being dynamically generated from that template. And again, we can play around with the styling and stuff like that, but that's the point. That's probably how you should go if your pages are gonna be all the same, um, because that's just gonna make it, that's just gonna make it easier for you and you're not gonna have to do as much stuff. So um, the next thing that we wanna do here is uh, actually even with, did we do it on create account? We even did it on create account, we just don't have a form for that. So why don't we create a form for create account? That sounds like a, it's a good logical next step. So if we go to create a form and then we go to, for us we would be register. And also I kind of looked into this, like th these say like Woo and Jet Engine on them here. I think that's because you can, you can Jet Engine has uh, like a profile builder, which we may end up using um, depending on how it kind of shakes out. And then obviously with Woo, like there is kind of a profile built into that as well. So um, yeah, just something to kind of uh, think about. Um, all right, so I'm gonna call this, uh, we'll call it create account. And I will preface this with, this is a minimum viable product for the create account part. You could get more sophisticated, um, but uh, you know, it, it really depends on kind of ultimately what you want. And this is crazy, you do, we're not gonna need all of this necessarily right now. The way that I would do this, that I would kind of think about this is not, necessarily ask them for all of this up front. The current way that I've done it in the past is literally first name, last name, password, for first name, last name, email, password, and then confirm password would be like the optimal, I feel like in my, in my eyes, uh, at least at first. So we're gonna get rid of this uh, billing section. We don't need that. We d I don't care about, definitely don't care about shipping, but I don't care about billing. Um, I don't care about billing off the bat. Um, what we're gonna assume that we're building here is they can log in, obviously, if they have a thing, but if they don't have a thing and they're a new client, then you're gonna walk them through the onboarding process, and at the very beginning, at least, which we could we could evolve, they are just going to create an account, and then you're going to direct them, like maybe they'll have an order already in their account or something like that. You're gonna associate an order with them, and they're gonna um, go through that thing. What I like, you, you could create an account for them. You might not even need this, but the thing I like about it is it's an easy way for them to set their own password and kind of get in the motion of like going to the website rather than you just like saying, hey, here's your account on this website, go do this. You know, pros and cons to both, but, but yeah. So um, here's what we're gonna do here. What I think we should do first is, f I like first name, personally I like first name, last name, and I want them to absolutely enter these. So I'm gonna rearrange these, I'm gonna go first name, then I'm gonna go uh, last name here. And then um, I don't want them to enter a username. What I actually want is, I want I want the username to be a, I want it to be, I'm hitting the wrong thing here, oops. Uh, I want the username to, I think you need to populate a username, but I want the username to be one of two things. I either want the username to be the email, which I don't necessarily like, or they can have a username, but I want it to just be populated from first name, last name. So if we hide the username and we give it a, a default value over here, if we give it like first name and then last name, then what that should do is somebody types in John Doe and then they don't see username, but it does get populated and filled in as John Doe. 
just like as it would there, then that seems like that's a that seems like that's a solid way to uh, to kind of go about that. Email obviously definitely has to be an email uh, address and everything like that. It's very interesting that the other on the other side they put email address and on this one they didn't write email address. I don't know which I like. I don't know if I like email or email address, but whatever. Uh, nickname we are absolutely not showing them that that doesn't need to be there display name I like how they put all these fields in here and map them accordingly but you don't need those uh, you website you don't need those these are all like default WordPress um, profile type things um, and then for down here for register I'm gonna call this create account because I like that I like that uh, terminology there publish this now what we need to do is our uh, form field is four. And also I want to make a quick note about this as I show you the workflow because I was explaining a lot of stuff. And now let me show you. We built this form. It is the create account form. The way that we're going to inject this form into our um, into our create account page, right? As you can see, it's not here. What we're going to do is we're going to go edit the page, edit the create account page. And we've created this custom associated form field. And we're going to we're going to put uh, I think it's four, right? We're going to put four in there down at the bottom and we're going to press update. And what that is doing is that is saying to the template now that is our public pages template, when you're at the create account template and you're and you're dynamically generating stuff for create account, down here where you don't know what form to put in there, put in the four, the, the form with the ID four, okay? And... What that is going to do is obviously what you can see here, it's going to give you the option to uh, just dynamically bring that in there. The one way that that could be better, which I looked into this and I don't think you could necessarily do it, there's probably maybe a way, is this to me, this is a little scary. How like there's just like a number sitting down here and it's not, um, it's not actually tied to the form. There's not like a relation built. It's literally just like I'm telling it what the ID is rather than it like, than a relation where it's like this object to this object, like page to form. I've tried to do that, and I don't think with Jet Engine, not that I could see, it didn't look like you could relate forms in any way. Um, you could probably relate Jet forms, like Jet Form Builder forms, but I I didn't see one for WS form. So maybe there is. I'll look into it more. I'll let you know. But this works. It's just a little scary to me, but it is what it is. So um, anyway, now they could do first name, last name, email address, password, and then uh, and then password confirmation. And we should probably test this, which we will. But I want to make sure I'll play around with a couple of these things. So we want password strength. I like how you can even set minimum password strength. Honestly, I mean, honestly, I, I kind of want to put medium on here because I don't want people's accounts getting compromised. Um, I'll put password visibility toggle on as well. And uh, suggest password again. Like I think, I think that's going to confuse a lot of people. I really love that option though, but I think it would confuse a lot of people. Um, but uh, let's see if we go refresh over here now. Then we have you can suggest a password. I, I never remember to click the publish button ever, 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 ever. Um, so yeah, so you can type in some stuff here. You can do that, and then you can type in this and this and this. I don't like how it doesn't say that it's not, they don't match, but I'm assuming it says that when you uh, when you kind of go through this, obviously. We'll test that in a second, um, but all right. So we got, uh, we did that, and let's go back here. Let's take a look at our actions for this. User management, obviously these are templates, so they should be pretty good. Lot of stuff here that is unnecessary now. I will delete all of these. This is just, what this is doing is, uh, is obviously wasn't a full WS form tutorial, but what this is doing is this is mapping its user management and it's mapping like the, it's registering the user based off of the data that was put in. So you want to put username ID and like you need to map the form field to the user field. And actually it'd probably be easier if we saw it like this. So you want to map the username to the, the username in the form field to username here, email address to email, blah, 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 whatever, you know, and then we can get rid of nickname. Uh, we can get rid of display name. We can get rid of uh, website. Honestly, the other, the, maybe the other thing I would do is potentially um, like for display name, like maybe you could enter in, you know, first name, space, last name, like we did for the the username thing, but you don't, I mean, you need a username. You don't need a display name. It's not really the end of the world. It doesn't really matter. Um, 
so yeah uh do, 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 let's see and then obviously again these you don't even need a first name and last name but you do need these other ones and that should be pretty good cool awesome um then okay so this is interesting so the role that will be assigned now i don't know why this isn't updated with the way that we updated it in uh wordpress but i would say that we probably want them to be customers uh by default i think that's probably what we'd want them to be like we set up in the other thing so yeah all right cool and then let's get out of this and we should sh we could show message that thank you for registering um we could say like uh we could say like your account um your account has been successfully created and then ultimately ultimately um this might depend on what you want to do uh and we'll, we'll we'll show you how this actually works but you probably are going to want to redirect them you know you probably don't want to just redirect them you probably want to oops uh there we go select redirect i guess we can call it oh uh, we can rename that that's sec redirect okay um and we want to redirect them to so they would be on slash create account or slash register i think we called it we probably want to redirect them just to the dashboard that should work cool is there a way the thing that's weird to me is like it shows that message and i feel like we need to we need to write something oh show duration oh that's cool we should definitely lower the duration i feel like because it's not it's it's too long i feel like um uh you know this i would say like you will be redirected to the dashboard um shortly 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 is good cool let's do um i don't know what the i don't know what the default is but i feel like it's at least three seconds let's try I don't want to make it too long though. Let's leave it as it is. As long as you, I feel like you, you just make it shorter or you tell them somehow or you, you, you drop them on a, honestly, to me, what I may end up doing, um, minimum viable product, this is fine, but I might drop them to like a thank you page almost, like a get started page rather than just going to the dashboard for the first time. But ultimately, it depends on it depends on what you're trying to do if you're trying to just like send them a link and get them into the thing or if you're trying to get them to like actually sign up right away it it, it just depends on what you're trying to do so uh, why don't why don't we try it why don't we try it let's go over to here and let's go let's copy this link let's go new tab and let's go boom and register okay all right so um, email well, let's let's actually try a couple things just to kind of see what the the basic default is like. So that that email, oh, that's first name. <laughs> maybe maybe I should put email first. I don't know. Um, but uh, let's just say um, Jane Doe. I I I just I know I just did that, but I really do like having first name last name. I could probably put this. I could style this form differently too. I probably would want to put first name and last name maybe like next to each other. Uh, but um, address. Let's do that because it's going to be very interesting to see what happens when that email address is already in there. Um, and then I don't think I put a thing on this. It's also a little weird how that was getting bigger like that. Not really sure I like that, but let's just say password and pass. That's yeah. I don't, I don't like that. That we're going to style that a little differently. But password and password, create account. Sorry, that email address is already used. Okay, no problem. Let's do um, uh, da, 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 da. do I have another something? Um, let's do support um, and then create. So oh, I didn't publish the form. Damn it, every time I didn't publish the form. Okay, all right, all right really ate this i actually i you know the first thing that i did after i was playing around with this for a while i was like yay can we can we make it so you can turn off the publish thing and just like auto save the changes and they're like no that would that would ruin the workflow i'm like oh, okay well it's ruining my workflow 
Um, all right, so let's just forget and do this again. Uh, let's go down to users. If you use WS Forum, remember to, I mean, obviously it worked though. Well, actually, mm -hmm. still confusing why it's, why it's doing a subscriber, but we'll figure that out, I guess. Um, okay, uh, da, 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 back into, uh, let's go to our edit this again. All right, we'll do that again. But I do want to look at this though. Why is it making, why is it making, oh no, don't do that. Why is it making the people, didn't I say customer? Didn't I say customer? Well, I guess, okay, I didn't save it before and it was it was subscriber. Okay, so that, that might make sense. All right, so let's go back here. Let's go here. No, let's go, um, let's go, where do we wanna go here? Do, 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 do. Let's grab this. Let's go back here. Boom, boom, there we go. All right, let's try it again, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and support at findittech.com and password, password, create account. There we go. Whoa, that was super fast. What the hell was that? All right. I didn't change anything on the speed, so that was weird. Um, we'll have to see about that. That's that's fine, though. Um you don't, I mean, you don't even need to show a message, honestly. Like, I, I like the get started approach, really. I like the get started um, thing where it's like, just take you to somewhere. You don't need to show a message um, on either on either of them, log, log in or the other thing, so it's fine. I like the option to do that, but you, but you, don't, you don't need to do that. All right, uh, okay, cool. So now we have our create account working there, which is nice. It redirects to our dashboard. Um, we should probably go check with the forgot password thing uh as well um just to kind of get this form situation kind of wrapped up i know this video is probably getting pretty long uh so yeah all right so let's go to forgot password let's try that so if we go to forms slide over here and we go to get rid of that and we go to forgot password honestly we're going to be learning together on the forgot password thing because i don't know what exactly it's going to do. And we're going to have to check in with the emails and such. So let's go to, let's go to here. And honestly, I should put, before we even do that, here's what I'm going to do. Oops, whoops. Before we even do that, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to the site and I'm going to edit this with bricks. Um, actually, I didn't want to go there. Wanted to go here, slash dashboard. This is the only annoying ass part of this. When you are editing, when you're editing now, you can't, like when you go to the site URL in the dashboard here, in the admin, you're gonna go to the login screen. You're not gonna go to the dashboard. Like, so what you would think of as the, as the homepage, like you, again, pros and cons, but I don't know. It's just, that, that part's a little annoying. But it's not the end of the world. Okay, so for the dashboard, we don't need anything crazy here. All I really want is, um, I'm just gonna drop in a heading just for real quick, and I'll call it dashboard. We're not actually doing this right now. I just wanna kinda give us another, I wanna give us a button, and I wanna give us the option to log out, which I honestly don't know exactly how to do. So bear with me. Is there a simple, does Bricks make this easy? Oh my, that might be amazing. Because sometimes, sometimes that is extremely convoluted. Is that going to work? Because that would be awesome. All right. So dashboard. Let's reload the dashboard. Let's log out. Okay, it works. It works. Doesn't take us to the right place, but it works. So we're going to... Also, the other thing we should probably do is we should definitely hide this URL and everything. Like, you should do that regardless of what you what you do. But you But we need to make sure that this doesn't come into the flow. But I'm glad that, that that linked worked because that's that's uh, that's fine the way that that was. Okay, um, we needed a way to log out when we were doing these things. Okay, so if we forget our password, let's see where we're at with this. Support at finditech.com. Okay, what does this do by default? Okay, click the enter button and it didn't work. And I think there's a reason for that because you have to turn that on in the uh, 
in the uh, thing. It has a setting for that, which is nice. All right. Check your email for the confirmation link. Okay, let's do that. Let me check my email. Let me check my email here. I'll bring it up in a second. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. So what happens natively just by default? Okay. No reply. I didn't set any of this up, really. I don't think. No reply. Da da da. da. All right, I'd probably want to change this. I'd want to change this. I'd probably want to change the whole thing kind of, in, you know, here and there. Um, to support at, okay. Okay, well, this is interesting. Okay, wait, this is this is not that. This is, um, hmm, wait. Okay, to client portal. That part's confusing me because that's like the user. Okay, I don't know. Regardless, um, okay, let's open this link in an incognito. Hmm. Okay. All right, this is not the ideal workflow that we would want here, so we're going to have to play around with this. We definitely don't want it to, we definitely don't want it to do that. All right. So I think there's I think there's a way there's a there's a relatively straightforward way to, to to do this. Let's get rid of these dashboards and let's go to forms. Okay, so here's what we have to do. In order to get this to work and not go outside of our, you know, our design and go into the WordPress thing, what we have to do with WS form is it's very it's a very neat system. I just read the documentation. Uh, so you have to have you have to have two pages. You have to have a forgot password. Uh, I'm going to not say have to, but this is the way that I saw to do it. So you might be able to do it a different way. But what we're going to do is we're going to have a forgot password page, which we already have. We're going to have a reset password page. Then we're going to have two forms as well, obviously, to coincide with those. And right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our new form, our reset password form, and I'm going to take that down to our reset password page. And I'm going to put the form ID in there so we're all set up from the template thing. We actually have to do one more thing on the template. And the reason we have to... If anybody knows, if anybody can think think of what we have to do next as I get to what we have to do here. We have to go to the Bricks templates. We gotta go back to public pages. Because the last time we did this and we played with the public pages uh, conditions, we did not have the page that we just created. So we gotta go into the into the public pages template. We have to go to template settings, we have to go to conditions. These individuals are login pages. Actually, can I put multiple here? Oh, I could put lock. Okay, forget. The, I don't know why I did this like this, but this this is so unnecessary. Okay, individual, and like this. My point is though, we were we only had co uh, create account, and login, and um, forgot. But we also need to have a reset password. So those are our four, uh, at least for currently, our four main public pages that we want this this template to be attached to. So we have to go back there and we have to do that. Okay. And again, there's probably some styling issues here. Like the, I, I screwed up the classes because they were called login or whatever. We can come back to that or we can we can deal with that at a later time. But it works right now, so that's fine. Um, awesome, cool. All right, so now we're on forgot password. So now the concept is once this is the this is the key piece here. When you go into this is designed to work, I think if you don't like obviously it worked and we didn't have a reset password form, right? But if we, the, the, the kicker, one of the kickers here is when you go into the forgot password thing and you go to the actions. So somebody is putting their email in and then they are getting a link via email to reset. What you have to do is you have to go into the send email and you can open this up and then you come down here and where it says to, to reset your password, visit the following address, user, da, da, da. You have to, there's a special string. You need to look this up in the docs, of course. Um, oops. Let's do this and this. There we go. There is a special string type thing that you have to add at the end of this. Now you don't want path on here. You want this to be your actual, your actual path. So I believe I believe that should work because that is our our reset password page, right? So this is our forgot password email, and down here you have to say user lost password, da da da, whatever. Because if we go over here and we go back to this email. This is some sort of weirdness, and it's at the WP login. You don't, you don't want that. You don't want that. 
what this is going to do instead is it's going to it's going to go slash reset password and then it's going to give you the this this is the important part this key that is generated right for the specific user so um, it'll all make sense here in a second so we need to do save and we need to publish the form so we don't have that happen again there we go all right so now if we go back and we go here and we get rid of this and we say forgot password now we're in here and we go support at find it actually you know what let's do a different email uh, tech.com and get new password check your email for the confirmation link okay we'll do that and then we go over here and we go here now obviously they're they're, they're still because it's from the same person but you see that reset password look at that that's amazing okay so now let's take this link open an incognito tab and booyah we are back this is awesome i really like this platform this is so great okay so now my next question is fundamentally out of the box usability wise what do you want to happen here do you want to type in a new password like password one or whatever also i want to put the uh the visibility toggles on there but that's not imperative right now we know how those work um well actually i'm gonna i'm gonna type in i'm gonna type in something that's definitely wrong here because i want to see what happens passwords don't match okay i wish it was kind of dynamic where it said it before you hit that button but that's fine um maybe there's a way to do that regardless i'm pretty sure they match now they're just password one or whatever um the question is what happens here next in the in the let's click it and see what happens so it says your password was, was successfully reset by default I don't think anything happens, which is strange. I mean, it's not strange, but it's it's uh, probably I would say suboptimal. Um, so we need to see what happens. So reset password, and we go over to our actions, and we say okay, so yeah, so it does that and just shows the message. Now the question really becomes to you what you want to do. In my mind, in my mind, they're resetting the password. They put their new they put their new password in. They ch their password has changed now. That is that it, that definitely worked. Do we want to? Where do we? I think we should redirect them, but where do we want to redirect them? Do we want to redirect them to the dashboard and log them in, or do we want to redirect them to the login screen and have them type the thing in again? There's probably a best practice here. I think you could probably go either way though. The only thing that I think in my mind that thinks. 60 steps ahead just like thinking of like what's going to be annoying with this is if you use a password manager okay you are not logged in and you're not in a, on a login form some password managers i think are smart enough for this but if you change your password is it going to it, if i change the password here and i and i log them in will it will it be smart will most password managers be smart enough to take that password and uh, and ask if you want to save it or update it without already without having a field that's in that same form with the with the login you know email and everything like that that's the thing to me it's like i don't know i mean this login mm, i'm not well mm, i guess i mean i think we could i i still think we could do either um Let's see. Uh, if we go reset password here and we go back to things, let's say what happens if what if we this login part is just kind of confusing me. I'm not sure if we're if we're gonna if we actually do log them in, um, and we're not 100% gonna know right now because we because we can access that we haven't done restriction yet. We can we can access the the uh, the dashboard um you know without without being logged in so it's not really a great great concept but um hmm i do know one way we could test but let's do i, I just don't know that like let's see if let's see if we do this let's try let's try something probably a little unnecessary because i'm not 100 percent sure if it's if it's doing it or not what i'm going to do is i'm going to log i'm gonna i'm gonna reset the password using user management i'm gonna show them a message saying their thing has been that's been done then i'm going to log them in with the hmm k 
Can you do that all from one place? Let's see. New password, password. I have no idea if you can do this. Let's try it. So again, what I'm trying to do here is when they when they submit these, when they submit this, change their password, show a message has been changed, log them in and redirect them to the dashboard. I have no, no idea if it's going to work. Let's see what happens. And also, are we going to have issues? I don't know if this is even going to work because we this that thing might be, um, this will be another good test. We may get something that says the thing has been used yeah invalid see like that's cool that like you can only use it one time okay cool all right so let's go to forgot password and let's do hello at finditech.com i need to work on that enter thing i'm going to do that while that email comes real quick i'm just going to go over to um, the settings of this, I'm going to enable enter on submit on that, and then I'm going to enter. I wonder if you can do that by default. I don't know how many like default settings. It didn't seem like there were many default settings that, uh, that you were able to change here. All right, let's try this. Beautiful link. Open it incognito. Over here, reset password. Oh. oh, I didn't publish those forms, did I? Son of a... Unbelievable. Okay, well, I, it it works-ish, I guess. I mean, I would have to assume that you are getting logged in if you're doing that. I don't I don't know 100%, though, because we can't, we're not going to be able to tell unless we do something else to uh, to do that. And that's, that's annoying, but we're going to work on that. So, um, cool. Cool. Okay, again, so documentation and quality of tools is paramount to me. And, and and I'm about to show you something that this is the reason that I use tools like WS Form and Bricks is because the, 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 the attention to detail and like the little smallest minute things that you can do is just, it's just crazy. So I typed in, um, you know, log out URL, like we used for that button that we just had that problem with where it goes to the the other, you know, the main WP logout. And all you need to do is just put colon and then the, the ID of the page that you want to go to. And it will it will do that instead of the BS that we were just looking at. It's amazing. I mean, it's, it's literally amazing. It's like, I don't, Thomas is, is, is incredible. So all, what that means is you have to go to login. We want it to go to login, right? If we log out, we want it to redirect here. This is where we need to go. So our post ID is eight. You can see it up here in the top here, right? So all we need to do is we need to go back over to our uh, dashboard, which again, this is going to be annoying that we have to type that in, but that is what it is. And then edit, boom. And then right here, Instead of like Elementor, I'm gonna vent for a second. Instead of Elementor where it like gives you like dynamic data and just sets the thing, they're all like variables like this, where they're they're you just you can you can like add things, you can do multiple different things, all this all this sort of stuff. So let me make sure that's right, because this is the first time I've ever done this. Pretty sure that's gonna work. Okay, cool. Now let's go to our thing here and let's log in. And I have no idea what the passwords are now. Um, let me see if I can remember one. And it'll give us a good idea if the stuff's working or not. Will it blend? I'm not sure why that didn't work. Okay, whatever. Okay, log out. Unbelievable. I mean, like, that 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 stuff right there is why it's just chef's kiss. Unbelievable that it's that easy to do that. That's... That's so awesome. I don't have to do any weird code snippets. I don't have to do anything. It's just all by default right right in the builder. I, I, I have no words. I have no words. At this point, we have a login. We have a create account page. We have a forgot password page. We have a reset password page. Um, uh, the one thing, the one thing, the one thing we could talk about real quick is: Do you want? And it's just I don't. I can't, I can't answer this for you. Do you want to have the create account button? Like, do you want to have a link to the create account page on the login page? I would argue probably not. This isn't something that like everybody's logging into. I'm sorry, this isn't every something that like 
publicly people can create accounts for, most likely, I don't know, if in your case. If you do, just throw a link somewhere in there and um, and you can do that. But in my case, that's probably not gonna be how it is. Uh, but you could throw a link, uh, just literally like build a link somewhere else on this page, or you could potentially, there might be another way to do like a, you know, like a two button approach where one just doesn't submit it, like is a link or something if you really wanted to do that. But honestly, if I was doing it, I would just throw a link down here that just says like, already have an account, you know, go, go, or don't have an account yet, create one. Um, something that I'm definitely not going to do right now, but I would maybe consider doing, but I I haven't done. So I'm, I'd be weighing the options is like, like single sign on type thing with like, uh, either Microsoft or, uh, Google to completely mitigate the process that we just had there. But that's, that's a whole separate thing. And I'm not, not hundred percent sure if that's something that we're going to, we're going to do in this project or not. If enough people want to see it, then maybe I will, I will, I will do it. So make sure you leave some comments down there. Um, we are pretty much done with this video. I want to say, obviously it's not perfect, but this was a, a good step in the right direction and a, hopefully a good entrance into WS form and to bricks and everything just with, I know the video is long, but a lot of it was me explaining. I feel like it, it's not like this would actually take you this long. If you were just bopping through it, a lot of the things were done for us with WS form. So, um, what I will say is that the thing that we did not do yet is content restriction. And there is one method that is free and relatively easy, uh, but it's a plugin, it's called content control. And then there's another method, which obviously you could just do it like with code snippets, which we may do, or maybe we would do, um, um, maybe there's a way to kind of do it like natively, kind of have to, you know, kind of weigh our options as far as like what is the best route there. So I think we should maybe just try to tackle this real quick, at least get a minimum viable product again, solution for the uh, content restriction. Because currently right now as it sits, obviously you can just go into the dashboard even if you're not logged in, right? Uh, and that's not ideal. So let's just, let's just do that. And we're gonna do it the way that I have done it in the past. And it may not be the, it's definitely not the only way, as I said, you could do it with the plugin, you could do it with uh, code snippets. We're gonna do, we're gonna do, um, we're gonna use the content control plugin. Uh, if you haven't heard of it, um, it is a free plugin. And I think I started using it like even kind of, I mean, I, I used it before they got the kind of like a UI upgrade and everything like that. Um, but uh, let's try to take a look at it and see what we got here. So if we set up some, some restrictions, you just download it, content control, it's what it's called by Code Atlantic. Uh, and then we'll say, um, public pages, um, something like that just for now. Who can see this content? Logged out users. And then protection, where do you, uh, how do you want to protect the content? We'll redirect them, we don't really wanna replace it. Uh, where will the users be taken? Um, if, let's see here logged out this is this is very confusing uh the first time you do it i should actually probably pull up the um the ones that i have on the other website it might make more sense but who can see this content logged out users can see the public pages well actually let's actually do this the a different way first so what what i would be doing here is like logged in users can't see the public pages we're gonna set that up but that's a little unnecessary right now let's do um just like uh, let's say like private pages or something like that. So who can see the private pages? Logged in users, any users can see the private pages. What do we do? Redirect them. So this is like saying, if we try to access dashboard, which is a private page, where are we gonna take them to? We wanna take them to, we could take them to the home page, truthfully, because the home page is not a private page. So let's just say homepage for now, because that's that's the way we have it set up. If you don't set it up the way that I have it, you probably don't wanna take them to login, because I think with the pre free version of this, this plugin, that's probably gonna take them to, uh, well, login and back. I, I think what they're saying there is take them to login and back, so that would take them to the WordPress thing, but then it would forward them back. Let's leave it at that for a second, but it's it's trouble. You'll you understand what I'm saying. And I'll, I'll I'll explain it once we uh, once we kind of uh, once we get in there. But hang on. So handling matches uh, within archives, filter the da, 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 redirect to a different page. Um, I don't think we need any of that currently right now. And then content. So this is the thing: is 
what do we need? So if it is any really the way that, the only way to really do this is if it's anything other than the four pages that we have here. And this is this is a good example. If it's anything, obviously dashboard is kind of in in a league of its own here. And I don't know if there's a way to actually let's put these uh here, let's do it like this. This is a this is a good way. Hang on one second. Let me go like this, and let me go like this, and let me put dashboard over here. There we go. Cool. Um so I'd rather have these flipped, but that's fine. But these are the the um uh, public pages and these are the private pages right now. So um, if it's if they are trying to access anything that's not these, like basically if they're trying to access any of these, then we need to do it. So we need to figure out how to do the conditions in that in that manner, right? So it's like if uh, da, 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 is not the homepage is not a wait a second, let's see. If logged in user is, um, it's so confusing the way that this is set up, is not the home page. It's not the home page. It's not the, what is group, by the way? Oh, it's like another, okay, okay. Here's, here's the way to do this. I should just look at the other um, things, but. If is not a page, there's a there's a pot there's a spot in here where it says page. If content is not is not a it's supposed to be a specific page though. Why can't I why can't I change that after I click on it? What the hell? Is not a is there a way to do this. Not a selected page. Something. I feel like you could. I feel like we could read this a little easier if this was like not a scroll bar like this. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Is not. not a selected page there we go okay so if it's not login if it's not uh reset if it's not forget if it's not um there's also a couple other things but this is the minimum viable product um and create I'm pretty sure this is right we're also probably going to want at some point we're probably going to want checkout in there so i'm going to put it in there now um and cart I'm not sure about cart I'm not sure about cart but I'll leave check out in there it's totally un unnecessary right now but if I set that up right which I may not have it may be the opposite let's go and over to here and let's refresh yes we did okay so this is this is the thing okay that worked However, the login and back thing means that you're going to go to this login, which is the, the, the login, right? The regular login, and then redirect back to where you want. You really do want the, the, the redirect back, okay? You want the redirect back because if your users want to go to a specific page, if they want to go to, you know, the task manager page or something, slash task manager, then if they click on that link or if they have that link bookmarked and for some reason they're logged out and they 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 click on the link and it's like oh you have to log in then they log in then they're going to be like just dumped off at the general redirect instead of being redirected to where they want to go so i'm actually not sure if we're going to be able to fix this right now but i'll give you i'll give you another example so protection homepage or custom url there might be a way to do the custom URL where we can put the the, the redirect back in there. Um, I know with the pro version of this of this plugin, it says you can have custom login URLs, which that would probably solve that problem. But I'm not really necessarily trying to trying to do that. Um, let's see what happens here though. Dashboard. 
You see what I mean? Like this is fine. It's gonna work for now. Minimum viable product, it works. It's better. It doesn't take them out to the other thing, but that's not gonna really work long-term per se for us because when we log in here now, because we have the dashboard, that's all we can go. It's gonna work. It's gonna look like it works. But if that was any other link other than dashboard and they weren't logged in, they're not gonna get the redirect back after they log in. So not optimal for the for the time being, but is what is what it is right now. So yeah, that's what uh, that's what I'm thinking. Other than that though, um, let's let's kind of recap here as far as everything that we've done and kind of uh, where we're at here after stage one of this of this rebuild we added some some plugins and everything like that we set everything up we added pages we are at uh you know several pages here obviously some of the woocommerce stuff but we have four we'll call them four public pages right now login forgot password reset password create account you could argue maybe like checkout ends up being a a a, a public thing but that's down the line but we have these four public pages all of them have forms all on them none of them big point none of them are singly um independently styled or anything like that they're generated via the bricks template which is we didn't fully style that there might be some like mobile responsibility res mobile responsive issues uh with acss though i will say probably not much but like there's there might be some weirdness there that we could address but on the whole you know uh functionality wise they work great and we didn't have to do a lot of work after you know we refactor that one piece so that's fantastic we have a dashboard that is actually a private page and via the content control plugin cannot be accessed if you are not logged in so that's another thing um we again we may have to work on the content restriction a little bit more with certain files and things like that uh but you know ultimately uh we are we are very much trending in the right direction here Trying to think if there's anything else that I want to say. Don't really think so. Um, I think this has been a really great first video, first installment of this series. I'm happy with the progress so far. Like I said, you'd probably you know, watch this back and, and do this way faster. Uh, but I appreciate you checking it out, sticking with me, and, and uh, kind of going through everything here. So that's pretty much where we're at so far. Uh, in the next video, we're probably going to dive into the actual uh, private page of the portal, start working on the dashboard, and kind of think about the feature set. Uh, if you're watching this video, let me know in the comments what pieces that you would like that you think are most valuable from the things we talked about in the first video. What pieces are uh, the most valuable to you in like which ones do you want to see first? Do you want to see like client stuff? Do you want to see e-commerce stuff? Do you want to see the products, different things like that? It's all going to come together. We're all going to get videos for all that. But let me know what is most important to you. I will try to prioritize those as we go through um, as we start building out our client portal. So Thank you guys so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it, and I will talk to you in the next one.